Sometimes it's really hard to capture really detailed samples for your sample library. Maybe you don't have access to equipment. Maybe you don't have access to the right space or even the instrument. Sometimes you don't want that many samples. You're going to be uploading this to a community like Piano Book, for example, and you don't want it to be too large for people to download. So with less samples, how can we make it still detailed, expressive and wonderful to play? Here is a trick just for that. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to my channel. I'm a huge fan of sampling, if you've noticed from any of my other videos on this channel. The problem is, though, that sometimes sampling can feel like there's a little bit of a gap between the haves and the have-nots. You'll understand what I'm talking about when you see some amazing sample libraries out there that have been recorded in these amazing spaces with these amazing beautiful instruments as sources, with vintage microphones and all the equipment you could ask for. Sometimes when you see that and you're looking at that amazing library, you probably will sit there and feel, wow, I, I need all of that in order to make this instrument sound amazing. No, not the case. You can start with anything. And I really encourage you to get started right now. There is never a better time. Even when you don't have access to all that amazing equipment, you can still produce something really cool, but also really expressive, really real. And I wanna share one little trick that will help bring some expression back to your instrument, even when it doesn't have all these amazing velocity layers and round robins. Let's dive into that today. So a pretty common thing when you start sampling your first instrument is you'll probably hear these terms velocity layers. Basically what we mean by that is we've recorded a very loud note, a very soft note, and maybe some notes in between at different dynamics or volumes. You think about a piano, a piano key can be hit hard, or it can be hit soft and it will play a loud or a soft note as a result of that. Now, if you have all the time in the world, all of the space in the world and all of the equipment in the world, this won't be a problem to you. You can basically record as many velocity layers as you like and just keep trucking on. However, if you don't have all that equipment or you're looking to make a library that's more economical or more space saving, this little technique might help you get around that. Think about sound for a moment. The louder and harsher something is, usually the brighter it sounds. You think about a French horn playing really loud, it's gonna be really bright, or you're slamming all those keys down on that piano, it's gonna be really aggressive. However, a softer sound is more mellow, more calming. Again, think of the French horn, that beautiful mellow lyrical tone that it can have, that gorgeous sound when it's playing a little bit softer and hanging back a little bit. Same with the piano, that beautiful low soft sound of the piano used in countless film scores and multiple musical genres. If you don't have those velocity layers, you can sort of replicate this a little bit with a trick that I'm pretty sure I picked up from a Christian Henson video a while back. So thank you for that if that's the case. Essentially, there's a type of filter called a low pass filter. What it does is it allows the low frequencies of the sound to pass through while rolling off the top end and not allowing that harsh, brighter sound through. I actually have one here in an instrument that I made recently and posted to Piano Book. It's this mellow source synth and it sounds a little bit like this. It's quite a warm analogy type sound to a synthesizer and it sounds pretty cool. Particularly when you add a lot of this reverb and a lot of this delay in here and maybe some chorus too, a bit of saturation, just throw it all in. Mm, I really enjoyed creating this library and I, I do hope you like it as well. So feel free to go to Piano Book and download that one if you're interested. It's completely free. All you need is the contact sampler. But I'm going to use this one as an example today because I've actually sampled only one sample for every few notes. No velocity layers, no round robins. Essentially, it's a synthesizer, so it doesn't really need a lot of samples. So if I open up my instrument here, you can see that I've got four groups here. Um, I've got two different types of synth sounds that you can blend between, and then these tape textures you can also blend between. But if you look down at the mapping editor, I've only got one sample to every few notes, and that's fairly common. You don't necessarily need to sample every single note of every single key. You can often just be a little more economical and sample every few notes, maybe in thirds or fourths or fifths. The less samples you have, the less space your sample library will take up. And sometimes that is the guiding factor for when you're creating these instruments. The thing is though, if I play this instrument, you can hear as I play a softer note, it's soft. As I play a louder note, it's, it's much brighter. The reason this is working is I actually have a low pass filter that's being mapped 
to my velocity layers. So as I play a louder note, it opens up the filter, and allows more frequencies through. As I play a softer note, it closes off that filter and allows only the warmer sounds through. If I quickly flick back to the main interface, I actually have a low pass filter here that I can, that I can use for the normal performance. So if I just play a chord and dial it back, You can hear that at play. It's basically creating this darker, warmer sound. The thing is though, if I now go back to this instrument, I've also got another filter on this instrument group specifically. And in fact, on every one of these groups is the same filter. The difference here is that the filter isn't being controlled by a knob. I'm not just turning it down and up as I want to. I'm actually controlling it with the velocity of my hits on the keys. This particular filter here has a modifier applied using velocity. I've got the velocity attached to the cutoff frequency. If I hit those same two notes again, let's take a look at this cutoff ring. You'll notice that it's dialed all the way back. So this would normally be closed quite a lot, not allowing a lot of the high frequencies out. If I hit a soft note, that's exactly what happens. But you could see it sort of jump and open a little bit further. And if I hit a really loud note, it opens entirely and that is because of the velocity. What I'm doing is every time the velocity hits a really loud note, it's opening it all the way up. Every time it hits a softer note, it's closing it all the way. And all the hits in between gradually open up that filter. What this is doing is replicating what acoustic instruments do a lot of the time. They actually create harsher, brighter, higher harmonics in their timbre as they play louder. So that filter opens up as we play higher velocities on our keyboard. But then as we play softer keys, it's closing off that filter, playing less of those aggressive, harsher, higher frequencies. So you can really hear that at play in this library. If I play a soft chord, beautiful and mellow. If I play a loud chord, much brighter, much harsher. That means that now as you start to play, you will get a difference in tone. The harder you play, the harder and harsher that sound will probably be. The softer you play, the more mellow and calm it will be. And that means that you've now got control back over your expression. Imagine a piano for a moment. You will be used to, as a piano player, playing notes a little bit louder, a little bit harder, if you want them to sound a bit different. With this simple technique, you are adding that type of expressiveness back to any instrument, no matter how many samples you've got, whether you've got velocity layers or not, it is now back ready to go. And I think it does a pretty good job at replicating exactly the same thing. So this is a really quick and easy tip that you can implement in not just contact, but actually a lot of different samplers allow this. The first time I ever tried this was actually in Logic's EXS sampler which is now the multi-sampler in Logic. You can create a low pass filter, attach it to velocity and bam, there you go. Single use samples that now have a little more expressiveness to it. Hopefully this opens you up to the opportunity for your own library. And if you are just starting out, this might be a great way of experimenting and trying this technique to see if you can get a more expressive and lively sounding instrument. I share lots of techniques like these on contact sampling. So if you are looking to get into the sampling game, do consider subscribing to my channel. I share a lot of these tips, so it would be a shame for you to miss out. Give us a like if you've liked this video, but otherwise, until I see you in the next one, I'll catch you later.